Beautiful, bold, bombastic beets. I absolutely love beets or beetroot, and I'm incredibly excited to be sharing my tips on growing them with you in this video. So get your rake, hoe, and seeds ready, mm. because here comes all you need to know to grow perfect beets every time. Like so many vegetables, beets prefer a sunny spot in moist yet well-drained soil, and they also like a, a nice fertile soil as well. The easiest way to achieve that, of course, is with plenty of well-rotted organic matter. You could use garden compost. I've got some really well-rotted manure here that's gonna really power things along. I'm spreading the organic matter about an inch or three centimeters deep and this will help us to achieve that Goldilocks effect that we are after. We want the soil to hold on to moisture for a, a couple of days after watering or rain. And that's because beets are an incredibly thirsty crop. It's got to power all of that leafy growth and those big old roots after all. But we also want our soil to be relatively free draining so it doesn't sit in, in that really, really wet sodden soil. And all this organic matter will help us to achieve just that. Today I'm going to be both sowing and planting beets using a slow to bolt variety called Boltardi. Now beets can be prone to bolting or flowering prematurely early in the season especially, but at any times of the year, and that can make roots tough and inedible. So seeking out a slow to bolt variety is thoroughly recommended. I really love traditional red roots that have a deep and earthy taste, but if you like things on the slightly sweeter side, you might want to seek out some of the other options. Golden roots, pale roots, or the really very stunning candy or chilgia beets with their mesmerizing concentric rings. When it comes to sowing beets, you've got two options, directly into the soil where they are going to grow or into plug trays to grow on and transplant later on. I am going to do both. If you have the space, then it's worth sowing directly because that obviously saves time transplanting later on. To sow, simply start by marking out your row with a trowel or hoe, and we're aiming for a depth of around half an inch or one centimeter. Did you know that each of these seeds is in fact a seed capsule containing several seeds? So each one can produce a cluster potentially of seedlings. Because each of these seed clusters is actually quite a good size, you can pick up the seeds individually and sow them with care. And I'm starting off with a spacing of about two inches or five centimeters between each of them. If you're growing more than one row, then leave about eight to 12 inches, that's uh, 20 to 30 centimeters between your rows, depending on how big you want those roots. And they will eventually be thinned to leave them about four inches or 10 centimeters apart. It's late summer here, which if I'm honest, is a bit late to be sowing beets. But if you garden in a hotter climate, then this is a great time of year to sow them because they will really benefit from those cooler temperatures of autumn. Sowing direct into the ground is simple and straightforward, but sowing into plug trays has a number of advantages. It means you can get an earlier start. I'm in the equivalent of hardiness zone eight, which means I can make sowings from early spring, at least a month ahead of sowings made outside. And then during the growing season itself, it means by starting off in plug trays, I can have young seedlings ready to go out the moment vacant ground becomes available. Now to sow, you can use any all purpose potting mix, but just give it a bit of a sieve to get rid of any lumps. Firm the potting mix in, it doesn't matter about being quite firm because it gives more stuff for the roots to explore. And then once you've done that, just make little dimples ready to sow your seeds. Now I'm gonna go in with about three seeds per plug because I'm gonna be growing these on as little clusters of seedlings. Then just cover your seeds over and give them a really good water to set them on their way. Germination should happen within about a week in ideal conditions. That's warm, but not too warm. At the start of the season, it might be a little longer than that. Now we sowed three to four seeds and you might get more than that in the way of seedlings. So if you do, just pull out excess seedlings so we're left with no more than four seedlings per cluster. These were sown about two and a half weeks ago and have come on beautifully. 
and while most haven't got too many seedlings you can see there are a few here that have just a few too many and this lot here was sown getting on for four weeks ago and if I just pop one out you can see that the roots have filled their plug now so they're definitely ready to go out and they will be planted unthinned as a cluster like this. These ones here are getting a little bit drawn and thin so I'm going to plant these out as well because they'll benefit from the extra light outside. As I said I'm not going to separate these seedlings they're just going to go as a cluster and to allow for that I'm leaving a fairly generous space between them of about 8 to 10 inches that is 20 to 25 centimeters apart and kind of planting in a block arrangement like that. Our patch of beet is beginning to take shape now as these grow the seedlings will literally grow in opposite directions and push themselves apart so they'll get plenty of space. Beetroot or beets seem to really relish growing together in fact they seem to like each other's company. This row of beets here was sown direct so they've been grown in a row rather than as clusters. Now what I've been doing is thinning them out in stages initially to two inches or five centimeters apart and then to uh, four inches or 10 centimeters apart to let them grow to their full size. And by doing this, you've got two shots of the harvest. Your first one gives you slightly smaller mini beets like this, really delicious and tender. And then with the extra space between them, they can grow on to reach those full size roots that we want. Beets are pretty easy going vegetables, but there are two pests I want to make you aware of. The first are birds, especially early on in the season. Birds are hungry at this time of year and will find the little seedlings a tasty morsel. So if you find beaks pecking at your baby beets, then just cover them over with some sort of netting or mesh to keep them off. The second pest is one that's been giving me real strife this growing season, it's leaf miner. And you can see from these tunnelings here what it's all about. The little grub gets inside there and as it eats and feeds at the leaves it creates these tunnels which can eventually connect up. And it's on these young beets behind me here. Well the solution is just to go through and just pick off the leaves, badly infected leaves as you see them. And then before you just chuck these on the compost heap crush or smash up the leaves to kill off the grubs inside. That'll stop them metamorphosizing into adult flies, reproducing and laying more of their eggs and spreading the problem. Act on it quickly, keep on top of it and it shouldn't slow down growth too much and you'll still get a good crop. I mentioned earlier that beets are thirsty plants. Keep them well quenched and you will avoid so many issues such as small cracked or woody beets bolting or just a disappointing flavour. You definitely want to get on and water them if you see them badly wilting. Don't let them get to that stage ideally. I like to pair regular watering with a mulch of grass clippings. Now these spread across the soil will help to shade it and keep things a little bit cooler in hot weather and it will also slow evaporation. If you haven't got grass clippings then shavings of small leaves or perhaps straw would work just as well. If you're gardening in a really hot climate, then you can help your beets settle in by covering them with shade cloth once you've transplanted them. Or perhaps, as here, grow them in the shade of a taller crop such as tomatoes or beans. It'll help keep your beets cool and everybody loves cool beets. It doesn't matter when you harvest your beets, every bit of this crop is edible. Right from the tiny seedlings at microgreen stage, as young plants through to the full size roots of course. For baby beets, harvest when they're little under golf ball size. Now you can usually tell the size of the root by the shoulders of it poking proud of the ground, but if you can't see them just scrape the soil away a little bit to check. And to harvest, the very simplest thing is to get right down at the base of the foliage, grip firmly and then just lift and twist and pull the root out. And there you go. Isn't that a beauty? The great thing about growing beets in clusters is that you can go through the bed and just harvest the biggest beet in each cluster and then leave the others to grow on and take advantage of the extra space. That's a great way of doing it. I wouldn't leave the beets to grow too big though. Any bigger than tennis ball size is probably a little too big and runs the risk of the roots being a bit woody in texture. Just twist off the leaves once you've harvested your beets. That stops the leaves continuing to evaporate which will make the roots sort of spongy as they lose moisture through the leaves. So do that and then you don't want to cut into 
the root too much because it will bleed, but you can at least just trim off the kind of end of the tap root like that. And now this can all be stored in the crisper or salad compartment of your refrigerator. Beets sown for winter eating can be lifted up and stored in boxes of damp sand or potting mix if it gets really cold so they don't freeze solid and then they are good to go whenever you are. Now do not waste these leaves. They can be used in exactly the same way as chard or spinach. Stir fry them, steam them or add them into your smoothie along with some beet root to make a delicious and healthy drink. You can also pick a few leaves, just a couple from each plant at a time, from young plants like this to give these really small leaves, which are great in salads. Just don't overdo it though, because obviously the plants need the leaves to grow the roots so they reach their full potential. Mm. Mm. Beets are so versatile, it's not just about pickling them. My favorite way to enjoy them is actually roasted, but you can also bake them into cakes, puree them, or even dehydrate them and ground them into a sort of superfood powder to add to just about anything. They're full of antioxidants and packed with all sorts of cancer-fighting goodness. In fact, for sheer nutritional value, you can't beat them. Let me know how you use beets in the comments below, or if you'd like to try your hand at other root vegetables, say perfect carrots, why not watch this video next? I'll catch you next time.